Dr. Wangia, you know, we, we spoke about the three funds that, um, that will form the Social Health uh, Authority. What drove the specific design choices? Why, what's the thinking behind having these three separate funds instead of one big fund, for example? Yes, and thank you, Anne. So we, we need to really be focused. We know that uh, first of all, with the current government, we are really focusing on um, achieving UHC through a primary healthcare approach. And this is not just a country priority, but it's a global, a general direction, which um, of course has been seen to have a high return on investment. And therefore the, the real, uh, that really catered for the main reason why we at least had the primary health care fund so that it can cater for uh, the primary health um, services, which are largely close to 90% of the services the citizens actually, actually need. And catering for these uh, primary health care services would actually, um, Re ensure uh, equity, I would say so, because most people at least will end up uh, seeking the primary uh, level services. So for the sake of um, having a clear focus on really uh, financing this level and committing to this uh, financing, then uh, we had the primary healthcare uh, fund. And we also know that, uh, yes, in as much as we are also focusing on, on uh, moving away from donors, but before they move completely or uh, partially, we may find that there are actually people who are, uh, who would really like to support uh, primary health care initiatives. As it is right now, there are so many uh, primary health initiatives, um, you know, at um, you know primary health initiatives from different sources. And we are seeing this the end game of this uh, being that uh, all at, at the end of the day, all these resources will be uh, pulled together and therefore we'll be able to buy proper, you know, uh, you know, pull all these resources and be able to strategically, uh, you know, purchase primary healthcare services. Uh, when it comes to, allow me to move to the um, emergency and chronic and uh, critical illness fund. Imagine the emergency care is actually uh, catered for in the constitution that we need to provide not only the highest attainable standard of healthcare, but also um, that no Kenyan will be denied um, emergency care. But in the process of not, uh, you know, claiming so in the within the constitution, there is really nothing much or no much effort that has been put even by previous governments to ensure that this is that this constitutional right is actually met. So with that, we say that um, in order to cater for emergency care, because you never know when you'll need this care, then, um, and this is also captured within our health act, uh, therefore the need for the emergency fund. So this fund also uh, rides onto the chronic and critical illness fund. Uh, and it's based on the fact that we want to manage outcomes and not just necessarily uh, you know, incidences of care, because we have seen situations, especially uh, for patients with chronic illnesses, where say um, those who are covered by NHIF uh, to a certain limit could actually stop their care once that limit was exhausted. And uh, for instance, if it's um, cancer and you are due for say, say 10 cycles, and your cover can only cater for six cycles. We could see a lot of patients stopping at the six and waiting for their next year so that they continue. And at the end of the day, you realize that even the six cycles were in vain because then you the, the patient's condition actually goes um, uh, becomes probably worse than it was uh, before. So we are looking at this as a an, as an avenue to have you know, con the continuum of care, right, from the primary health um, services to, you know, the services at secondary level and to additional services uh, if, if need be. And when we're looking at this chronic, this, uh, I, I know there have been many questions as to whether all chronic diseases will be catered for within this fund. What we are seeing as, uh, uh, as the target for these chronic diseases are mainly the diseases uh, that, uh, the conditions that are over and above what will be covered within the SHI. So the SHI is, for the chronic disease, the SHI is actually the base. So when you have the SHI, uh, you exhaust your limit within the SHI, then automatically you, you, you get into the chronic disease fund. So to the patient, you may not see this happening because you'll get, con the, the continuum of care will be clear. But then 
uh, at the back end will know that um, uh, that you have exhausted your SHI and therefore you are now uh, dipping into the, the, you know, the chronic disease fund. And the same happens to critical illnesses, like uh, in cases of, uh, say, IC, you know, ICU care beyond uh, the, the, you know, what will be covered within uh, the social health insurance. And, be, and since most of the, the chronic and critical, especially the chronic illnesses uh, fund, uh, and mainly we know that most of the chronic, not all chronic illnesses are non-communicable, not, not all chronic illnesses are non-communicable diseases, but largely most non-communicable diseases end up being chronic. And therefore, even when it comes to looking for the resources, we can actually target the risk factors uh, to non-communicable diseases as uh, potential sources of uh, funding to this uh, particular fund. So it's based on that that uh, we saw the need to clearly separate this fund because you know even for the chronic uh, disease fund, you can't really call it um, a, a, an insurance as such because it's a sick fund. You are, it's definite that it, once you get into the fund, there is no risk sharing. There is no you are sick. There is there is, there is no well person uh, catering for you, and therefore the, and that's why we are committing that this particular fund will be uh, publicly financed and not, um, you know, not contributory like the social health insurance where you are looking at, um, you know, looking at the risk, uh, you know, uh, the potential, the potential uh, you know, you know, the, you know, risk, risk pooling, uh, so to speak. 